Grasshopper is a parametric design tool that is revolutionizing the way we look at product design, architecture, engineering, and more. But what exactly is Grasshopper? In this video, I will cover the basics of what Grasshopper is and why we chose it here at Shape Diver. This will give you the basics to unlock the limitless potential of parametric design. First of all, we need to look at Rhino, which is a computer-aided design software, so a CAD software, uh, because Grasshopper lives inside Rhino. Here we have the basic layout of the Rhino software. In the top, you can find all the different commands that this program offers. So we have the standard, we have views, display, select, but the ones that are more important for us are the ones that actually generate or uh, modify geometry. So for example, here we have uh, all the surface tools, solid tools, meshes, etc. So as you change these tabs, you see how the tools that we are offered are changed as well. So for example, let's say that we want to create a solid. So let's say that we want to create a box. So here we have a box. So I just click on it. Then I click somewhere in the viewport. So the viewport is where our geometry will be displayed. Then I can, uh, for example, put it in the origin. So I can put 0, 0. You can see the 0, 0 appearing here. So I'm typing it, 0, 0. And I go enter and then our box will start from the center. I can define how big it is and how high it is and then that creates our box. Then we can continue and for example create a sphere, so we click on the sphere, we click on where we want to position this sphere, so let's say that in this corner we define how big the sphere is and then we have the sphere here in the viewport and in this way we can start adding more geometry or modifying geometry. A very simple way of modifying geometry is to do a boolean difference, so to do that we just need to come here again to solid tools and here we have all of these commands so I will click here in, in Boolean difference and then it, it is asking me to select a surface or poly surface to subtract from. So I want to subtract from this box, then I hit enter and then which poly surfaces I will subtract with. So I will extract with the sphere and then I click enter and then that will create this effect in my box. But let's see that I want to start seeing other results. So here I subtracted this sphere from the corner, but what if I want to change the way it gets subtracted and we, I want to position the sphere in a different way. So I will have to go backwards, I will have to go Control Z or Edit uh, Undo and then go backwards in my steps and then for example move this sphere a bit down or to the side or whatever I want and then I will have to again uh, come to the boolean difference, select the box, go enter, select the sphere, go enter and then see the next result and so on. So if I want to explore the design and I want to explore how my box will be cut through this sphere in different ways then I will have to either go backwards and forwards and start uh, subtracting in different ways or even creating copies. So for example we create a copy of this and we put it in a different place so this is of course not the most optimized way to explore the design and that's why in Rhino we have something called Grasshopper and we can find that uh, here in standard here we have the icon of Grasshopper so let's launch Grasshopper so in one side we have Rhino and on the other side we have Grasshopper which is a program that lives inside Rhino so unlike a Rhino Rhino just creates geometry and applies it directly into the viewport without storing the design thinking process that we are going through. So it just displays the final result. But in Grasshopper, we can store that design process. How? Similar to what we have in Rhino, we have also a set of tabs here in the top where we can access different commands, different tools that Grasshopper offers. So for example, here we have curves as we have also in Rhino, the Curves tools. We have surfaces, as we have also in Rhino surfaces. We have meshes, the same happens in Rhino, and etc. We have a lot of tools. But instead of creating directly here a cube, we are going to create a command. And to do that, we just select, for example, the cube in surfaces. We have here uh, primitives. So let's create a box, a domain box. 
and we have to apply it to this area which is called the canvas where you put all of your design thinking process so we apply we put this domain box here then we can zoom in by scrolling and we can see that instead of creating directly a box in our viewport like we do in Rhino we create this little um, component so we call these components which contain some inputs and some outputs so the inputs here for example is a base a X domain a Y domain and a Z domain and in the output we have the resulting box so let's say that we are going to apply the domain in the X direction so we need to insert here the number how big our box is so in this case we can double click in the canvas that will add the search box and then we can write panel for example so the panel will let us enter information text information in our uh, canvas so we double click in the canvas and then we write for example a hundred and then we will connect these hundred units into our box so we just have to click on the output of our panel drag and then drop inside our x domain that will apply this x transformation into our box then we will apply the same for the y and we will apply the same for the z and you can see here now in rhino how our box starts to appear however there is a better way to make these inputs so that we can quickly edit the data that gets used and that's through a slider so again we go double click in the canvas we put slider and then here we have the number slider so let's delete all of this area and let's connect into our box this input and now we can see here how our box starts to change now of course we need also the other inputs so we can uh, control uh, c control b to copy our slider and we can connect it into the y and we can connect it into the z and in this way we have created three inputs that we call also parameters that define how our box looks so we can move this slider and change the x direction of our box we can move this slider and change the y direction and move this slider and change the z direction now let's add a sphere like we did in rhino so we can double click again write sphere so here we're going to take this first one so here we have the sphere and again we have also some inputs and some outputs so the input is the base so where our sphere is located and the radius and the output is the sphere itself so let's create another of these sliders so we can go control z control b and we input here our slider for the sphere and now we can see our sphere here being displayed so we can make it smaller we can make it bigger and now we can start to make interactions between these two objects so on one side we have the sphere on the other side we have the box and then we want to do the same we want to make a boolean difference so to do that we have here another section that is called the intersect section so here we have the solid difference we click on it and we click again in the canvas to apply so the first object a will be actually our box because it's from where we want to extract uh, geometry and then the b input will be our sphere and then that will give us the final result so if we hide this one so we click on this one we go shift and we click on this one again uh, then we can go right click and then here we have different commands for visualization so we can preview off these objects so we don't see them anymore and then here we have our final result where the section of the sphere is now no longer existent here but all of this is linked so all of this is a thinking design process so now we can go back into our sliders and start to change for example the radius of our sphere and see in real time how that changes the design of our box i can also change the size of our box and see how that changes again uh, everything else and this in a matter of seconds so i'm storing the way our design looks and i can explore it very easily and very intuitive of course this example of the sphere and the box is a very simple example but Grasshopper was first seen in 2007 so it's been more than 13 years that have made this software Grasshopper a very powerful one not just for the design industry but for the architecture industry, footwear industry with Grasshopper you can not just create geometry but analyze geometry 
create engineering analysis, automatize production processes, etc. And with Shapediver, you can access all that power of Grasshopper just via a browser. And with that, you can create amazing product configurators for your e-commerce store, for example, or internal collaboration tools for your architectural firm. The options are infinite. And if you want to learn more, please go to shapediaper.com. And this is all for today. I hope you learned something new. And if you want more content about Grasshopper and Shape Diaper, please click on the subscribe button and like this video. And I will see you in the next one.